In this video, I want to talk a little bit about nonverbal communication. So we're talking here about everything excluding the words that you choose. So the words you choose are, are something else, language and verbal communication. But today we're going to talk about nonverbal communication, everything else really. So uh, let's start by discussing some of the nature of nonverbal communication. First of all, we need to recognize that all behavior has communicative value, not just the words we choose, and, and but everything about that communication has communicative value, everything about that behavior. The way we use our eyes, the way we use our voice, the way we uh, gesture, the, where we choose to have that conversation and, and communicate those things. Everything about that has communicative value. Nonverbal communication, though, is primarily relational. We don't use nonverbal communication so much to communicate facts and data as we do to communicate how we feel about that message, how we feel about that person, and other relational type um, things about that communication. So we wouldn't communicate... You know, the Civil War happened from 1861 to 1865, the U.S. Civil War, uh, non-verbally. That would be difficult to communicate non-verbally. We would communicate that verbally, but through our non-verbal expression, then we would communicate how we felt about that uh, information, how we feel about sharing that with that person, and all kinds of other things. But it's primarily relational, not, not factual and data-based in nature. Nonverbal communication is ambiguous. That means that it can be interpreted in a variety of different ways. So just for example... This gentleman making a variety of facial expressions, you know, what's he trying to express with each of these? Well, some of them are, are fairly straightforward, but others of them are, you know, kind of confusing. We, they could mean a variety of things. We don't know, based just on his verbal or his nonverbal expression here, exactly what he means, and that's because nonverbal communication is ambiguous by nature. It's, it's not as clear as, as maybe some verbal communication, which can also be ambiguous, but, but certainly nonverbal expression is, is much more ambiguous. Nonverbal communication also occurs in mediated messages. And by that we mean messages that we send using some sort of technology. So when we're texting, we're emailing, we're doing things, we have found ways to incorporate nonverbal communication into those mediated messages, which are actually pretty channel lean. They, they tend to be lean in terms of what we can express to them nonverbally, but, but we have found ways to do so. And it started very simply with things like this, showing a little smiley face, right, by using different characters that we have on our keyboard, to express a smiley face. And then we progressed a little bit and we got into some different uh, emoticons. They used to be called emoticons. And now, and now, of course, we've got emojis out the wazoo. You've got pages and pages of emojis. And my favorite one by far is the, the ice cream emoji. I love that one. But, but so now we've got all these ways that we can communicate nonverbally through mediated messages. And, and so it occurs there as well. Nonverbal communication is influenced by culture and gender. So let's take a look at some of the ways that it's influenced by culture and gender. In terms of culture, nonverbal communication will be affected by the use of different emblems, by the uh, different meaning behind different affect displays, uh, how we use personal distance, eye contact, facial displays of emotion. You can see the, the list here of things that, that vary based on cultural influences. So nonverbal communication very, very much influenced by, co by culture and the different ways that we use it and the different meanings behind those different nonverbal expressions. So we need to be aware of those cultural influences. It's also influenced by gender. <clears throat> different genders, by which we mean you know, masculine, feminine, androgynous, things like that, uh, tend to express themselves differently through nonverbal communication, and, and gender tends to influence nonverbal communication through things like how emotionally expressive we are, by uh, the way that we use eye contact, how much and with whom, uh, the way we use personal space, and vocalics, and touch, and appearance, all those types of things are influenced by gender, and they influence our nonverbal communication. So, uh, depending on which you know gender you relate more to, masculine, feminine, or somewhere in the middle there, uh, where you fall on that spectrum, that is going to influence how you express yourself nonverbally. So, be aware of those influences as well. Some of the functions we have for nonverbal communication, some of the things we use nonverbal communication for. Uh, first, creating and maintaining relationships. Nonverbal communication is very much a part of how we let somebody know if we're interested in developing a relationship with them or maintaining a relationship with them. Uh, by which we mean, again, not just romantic relationships, but we do this for friendships and people in the work environment and family members. We use nonverbal communication all the time to communicate our desire to uh, create and extend a relationship with that person or uh, vice versa, to not do so. We also use it to regulate an interaction. We use nonverbal communication, things like eye contact and pause and gesturing and things to regulate interaction and conversation. How do you know when it's your turn to talk in a conversation? Well, there tends to be a pause or they'll, you know, expression, you know, gesture to you and make a facial expression indicating that it's kind of your turn and they're done speaking. So 
We use it to regulate those types of interactions and, and all kinds of interactions, really. So uh, we also use it to influence others. You know, maybe we use it to intimidate somebody for nonverbal. You know, we get kind of close and we drop our voice and we get really intimidating and we give them a facial expression like this. Or maybe we're trying to schmooze somebody. So we do that through different touching behaviors and different icon. We, we, we change our nonverbal communication uh, in, in terms of how we want to influence somebody or in an attempt to influence somebody. We use nonverbal communication to conceal information, to deceive people. We, we use it for that a lot. And then we also use it to manage impressions, of course. Um, nonverbal communication is a major part of, of impression management and expressing the presenting self and, and concealing the private self and so forth. So nonverbal communication very much involved in managing those impressions. So let's get down to the, the, the nuts and bolts here. What do we mean when we say nonverbal communication? What exactly are we talking about? What kinds of behaviors are there? So let's talk about some of the different nonverbal channels that we have. First of all, we have body movement, or what we call kinesics, different ways that we use our body to uh, to enhance our communication and to express things, to take over communication at times. And so we have this, the different types of body movement, including things like facial displays. We showed you the gentleman earlier. Now we have some different facial displays here. Uh, we use a facial display for all kinds of different things. Uh, same with eye contact, our eye behaviors, what we call oculesics. Uh, we use our eyes to communicate different things. Are we trying to, are we smiling? Are we intimidating? Are we trying to woo someone? Are we, you know, how are we using our eyes? Uh, posture is a big part of body movement. Uh, what's our posture like? Not just are we standing up straight and things like that, although that's a part of it, but are we facing towards somebody? Are we turning away from them? How are we using our body and posturing our body in a way to, to send a message to that person? Our gestures. We use our, our gestures a lot to communicate nonverbally. Maybe you talk a lot with your hands, maybe you don't, but but either way, our gestures are a big part of communicating nonverbally. In addition to body movement and, and kinesics, we have what we call touch, which is called haptics. Uh, the technical term is called haptics for this, is haptics for that. So um, we use touch in a variety of ways. You have, um, of course, a, an emotionally expressive touch when you're trying to initiate physical contact. It may be sexual or it may just be you know, an affectionate touch. We also have clinical touch, and we have, you know, kind of a compassionate, empathic touch. And we use touch in all kinds of different ways um, to express nonverbal communication. And, and of course, there are different rules that go along with that that we have to keep in mind, but, but we use touch a lot as a nonverbal channel. We use our voice a lot. And again, we're not talking about the words that we're using. We're not talking about the language that we're, that we're choosing here, but we're talking about things like a rate of delivery, a volume, a tone, whether or not we're using different pitch, um, all those different types of things go into what we call paralanguage and the ways we use our voice uh, non-verbally to communicate. How are we using space? <clears throat> what kind of personal space are we observing here? If we're close to somebody uh, emotionally, then we tend to get a little closer to them physically when we're talking to them, uh, but we have these different layers of, of personal space that extend out to, to where we keep a little more distance between strangers, of course, than we do those that we're real close to, and we call that proxemics, the, the, the way we use space in, in our relationships to express uh, ourselves non-verbally. Some additional channels. Uh, one is territoriality. Think about it, you know, when you walk into a classroom, uh, you know, if you, do you expect to have the same seat every day from that, that day forward in that class? And if you came in and somebody was sitting in your seat, how would you respond to that? Or if you went into work and somebody was sitting at your desk, how would you respond to that? That's your desk. It tends to be your territory, and we express ourselves through that kind of territoriality as well. We express ourselves through time, what we call chronemics. Different cultures in particular express, use time differently. For example, in westernized cultures, individualistic cultures, we tend to be very what we call monochronic, which is we, we see time as a commodity, and we're very preci precise with time. When a meeting's supposed to start at 3 and end at 4, then it better start at 3 and end at 4, or somebody's going to be upset, right? Uh, but other cultures have a little more relaxed view of time. A, a meeting scheduled from 3 to 4 might start around 3, but not necessarily right at 3. And people kind of come in and go, and then we'll, it'll be over when it's over. It just depends on the culture. And, and that's what we call a polychronic um, perspective of time and the use of time. But but uh, so culturally, very much going to affect how we view time and how we use time and, and how what we consider time to be uh, in terms of a nonverbal expression. Physical attractiveness, also a nonverbal channel. We use our, our uh, physicality. You know, we, when we want to make a good impression, we dress up and we comb our hair and we do things like that. We try and make ourselves as physically attractive as possible. Um, clothing, 
a major nonverbal channel. We, use, you know, both to express in terms of the fanciness of our clothes and and, uh, and and the formality of our clothes, but also then we use it to express using um, brand logos and different things like that, or messages on our shirts and different things. All kinds of ways that we use clothing to to express ourselves nonverbally. Our physical environment. You know, how do we keep our home? Is it nice? Is it neat? How is it decorated? Is it is it uh, more modern or is it uh, a little well, you know, we're traditional. Um, and not only that, but our our vehicle, for example, if you're going to give me a ride in your vehicle, am I going to have to, you know, scoop over an armful of trash off the seat in order to sit down, or is it is it fairly clean? What does our physical environment say about us, uh, non-verbally? That'll communicate something because all behavior has communicative value, right? And then smell is a really powerful non-verbal channel, right? Uh, we know that smell and olfactics, we call olfactics, are the, the sense most tied to memory, for example. So when you have really strong memories, there's a good chance that it was brought on by a smell. And so we use smell a lot as a nonverbal communicator by wearing cologne and by taking showers and making sure that we smell good, or vice versa if we want to send the opposite message that we don't smell good. So, uh, But we use smell a lot as a nonverbal channel. So in terms of interpreting nonverbal communication, we, we have some things we need to keep in mind. First, we need to be sensitive to these nonverbal messages, and we need to be aware of them. Especially those of us from an individualistic society, we tend to be um, more focused on the words and take, take those words at face value, but we need to be a little more sensitive to those nonverbal messages and be aware that those are communicating something as well. We need to be able to decipher then the meaning of those nonverbal messages. Not only recognize them and be sensitive to them, but, but be able to interpret them accurately and, uh, and decipher the meaning of that. Part of that's going to be, uh, I mean, being aware of the situation. Be aware of where you're at. What's the culture here? What's the relationship? What, what's going on behind the scenes there so we can effectively interpret those uh, nonverbal communications? Also need to keep culture in mind, of course, as we've expressed cultures of huge influence on nonverbal communication. So um, so different cultures are going to use nonverbal symbols and signals to mean different things. So keep the culture in mind. And if you're unclear, ask for clarification. Do a perception check. Ask for what's going on just to make sure you get on the same page. If you have questions about anything related to nonverbal communication or other areas of communication, I'm happy to answer those via email. Feel free to email me at any time and I'll get back to you just as quickly as I can. In the meantime, happy communicating.